Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSC WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Don Ness, Executive Director of the Ordeen Foundation. Don has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Don, for joining us today. Yeah, oh, thank you. So the Ordeen Foundation has a particular mission and a particular way of executing its mission. Talk about the mission and how you execute it. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to, to be here. Uh, Ordeen is one of the, uh, the Ordeen Foundation is one of the oldest uh, private foundations uh, in Minnesota. It was established by Albert and Louise Ordeen uh, back in the 1930s, uh, and they uh, gave their substantial wealth uh, to this foundation with the goal of addressing issues related to poverty uh, in Duluth and, and surrounding uh, communities. And uh, the way that we approach uh, that is by entering into kind of long-term relationships with our nonprofit partners. Uh, and we believe in, in kind of being the, the quiet, steady uh, partner behind the scenes, uh, giving support, uh, not only financial support, but also kind of working with uh, the, the staff and the executives of these nonprofit to deliver quality service and, and hopefully finding a ways to, to address uh, the issues of poverty in our community. And the key is long term because poverty isn't an event and it cannot be resolved by one investment. It really is, it, it requires sustained attention. How do you enter into an initial uh, relationship? What prompts you to consider a partnership with a, someone who is focusing on uh, education or uh, or children and families, or health. Uh, how do you start that relationship off? Yeah, that's a great question. Ordine does approach uh, our giving in, in a slightly different way than you see oftentimes in philanthropy. Uh, many times foundations will have uh, competitive grant cycles in which they kind of uh, say, we have all this money and we're looking for ideas. And, and that's a great way to distribute money and, and to, to help with startup. Uh, Ordeen believes in the importance of the, the boots on the ground work, that sustained effort in building uh, capacity within our community to address these uh, issues that you're absolutely right. They're deeply entrenched and they're systemic in many ways and, and they're intergenerational uh, that uh, oftentimes uh, families can get stuck in uh, in poverty for generation after after generation. And so the sustained effort through our partners uh, uh, work uh, in the neighborhoods and, and directly with families, we believe is the most effective way uh, to get uh, to address the issues of poverty. And we want the dollars that we give uh, to our nonprofit partners to go to the greatest extent possible to direct service uh, right. to the people in need. So we, not to administrative overhead. You, you're looking at, if, if you're spending a certain amount of money, you want to know that that money is actually going to be experienced, the benefit of that money is going to be experienced by the end user. Exactly, and that's one way, especially for foundations that we can do that, is to, to ensure that they're not overspending on grant writing uh, right. and overspending on, on reporting. You know, for uh, oftentimes uh, nonprofits will spend a tremendous amount of time coming up with data and coming up with, you know, uh, meeting the needs of, of foundations coming up with reports that then go into a file right. and are never seen again. Well, what's the good of that? You know, we'd rather uh, develop this kind of more intense and more intimate relationship. And so we have a very clear picture of what's happening uh, on the ground within these organizations because we take the time to meet with them face to face and, and understand their challenges and having an honest type of conversation that they feel comfortable talking about their challenges because they know that we're not gonna pull dollars away from them because they're, they're facing struggles. In terms of, of that uh, initial relationship, does it, does it rely a lot on um, personal knowledge, in other words, a person-to-person -person communication, not only between the, uh, the executives of, of the foundation and the, yourself and others um, and the organization, their boards, but also with the people who are the end users. How do you collect that intelligence? Yeah, I think it's, you're absolutely right, that it's, it's both uh, the understanding of the organization, uh, the, the leadership, uh, the staff, uh, but then also having uh, as much of a connection as we can to uh, the end user, uh, to mm -hmm. the customer, to the client, 
uh, what is their life experience? What are the, the struggles and the barriers that they have in, in making a better life for themselves and, and for, uh, for their families? And, and so trying to see it as an integrated whole that it's not a hierarchy that, you know, here we are as a foundation and then the organization and, and, uh, and then the end user at, at the bottom, but more of a, a spectrum in which we're all at the same level. We all have the similar goal. Uh, the organizations uh, have a resource that we don't have, that we rely on their uh, good work and the resources uh, that they have working with the clients to fulfill our mission of addressing poverty issues. Uh, and we also see the client not as a recipient necessarily, uh, but as a partner as well. That uh, if, if they are treated with respect and dignity and seeing that they are part of this whole and we are successful when they are successful, uh, that then I think we have better alignment in, in terms of our mission and people feel better about the nature of that relationship rather than being put on edge saying, well, I better jump over this bar, otherwise I'm, th there might be a, a punitive uh, element to come. How do you work with other foundations, other funders, other players uh, here? Are you basically um, uh, sort of dividing the market of need into areas where each of you specialize or are there areas where you collaborate uh, in order to achieve uh, mutual objectives. And, and you are very place-based, so mm -hmm. there are some foundations who have a broader geography. Mm -hmm. um, how does this whole uh, dynamic work amongst the various large foundations here in this region? Yeah, and most of the, 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 the major players are place-based uh, mm -hmm. in our region. Uh, you know, Duluth is not a community that has a, a tremendous number of, of big corporations. So we don't have the corporate foundations. We don't have the, the larger regional foundations because those are based down in the Twin Cities. And, and from time to time, there are opportunities to, to work with those larger uh, foundations, but most of their giving is also going to be in the metropolitan area. And, right. and so the key relationships are with the Northland Foundation, the Duluth Superior Area Community Foundation, Lloyd K. Johnson uh, Foundation, which are all place-based, uh, some just in Duluth and most of them kind of a, a slightly broader, uh, broader regional uh, approach. And I, I would like to say that uh, I think the, the relationships there are good, um, but I think they could be better. I think there's opportunity for us to improve uh, in our coordination in terms of our, of our giving. Every organization holds you know, their autonomy in their giving very close to the vest and they don't necessarily want to, uh, to give that up, but uh, through uh, sharing of information and especially the sharing of here's what we hope to accomplish as an organization, I think there's ways that we could better coordinate to, to maximize our efforts. And your annual uh, funding um, is, is about what? Uh, we give about 1.4 to 1.5 million uh, dollars in, in giving every year. And you have an enormous staff that, that, that manages that, right? With, oh. with a lot of overhead, <laughs> a lot of, lot of offices scattered around. Uh, we, we are a staff of, of two and a half, uh, and uh, so we pride ourselves in, in being very efficient uh, in our giving. And again, that allows us to, to maximize the amount that it's actually going to our nonprofit uh, partners. Uh, uh, and just for some perspective, there are organizations, uh, foundations that have um, endowments that are twice as large as ours, um, or in some cases even three times as large as ours, uh, and with uh, pretty much the same level of, of giving. So uh, we, you know, and, and there are models uh, that, that larger staff and there are projects that larger staff uh, can take on. Uh, we tend to, to say that the efficiency of our administration allows us to best um, maximize our impact in the community through our giving. Now, you mentioned the, the, the core areas, basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, health care. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about the upstream um, uh, factors that impact that? Lack of education, uh, just sort of, just poverty. Right. Um, how, does, how do you think about that aspect of it? Because there is the immediate need and without the immediate need being uh, uh, addressed, people will freeze to death, people mm -hmm. will go hungry. So that's absolutely important. Are you also looking at some of these upstream factors? Uh, absolutely, and, and actually it's a, it's a change for Ordeen. Uh, in the past, we've been almost exclusively focused on kind of the end result and, and making sure that people that are experiencing po uh, poverty 
uh, have the resources and the support necessary to, to make their lives a little bit better and, and to uh, allow them to, uh, um, to, to live a, a productive uh, life. Um, but we're also recognizing that uh, because we have this long-term approach, that if we can move further upstream and to have interventions that, that can give people support and maybe allow them to get uh, uh, on a life path that uh, avoids poverty. And so we do uh, make uh, significant investments in uh, youth programming in our traditional low-income neighborhoods. Uh, the idea that if uh, these uh, uh, children can have a positive uh, adult uh, influence and can get help with their homework and, and can have a, a safe and supportive uh, atmosphere after school and during their out of school time, uh, that that might encourage them or provide greater opportunities for them to, uh, to avoid that cycle of poverty that is so entrenched. We also look um, a great deal at, at workforce uh, issues and uh, much of our, our programming is, is designed to address uh, those um, exiting incarceration. Uh, and it's a huge problem for, for folks that have done their time, they've right. served their, their debt to uh, society, uh, and oftentimes they, they uh, are re-entering um, uh, life and they, they find all these barriers. How do you see the role of, of business um, on the one hand, uh, government on the other? You know, everybody's always complaining about too much taxes and, and too much regulation and too much this and too much that. It seems that all of our complaints comes, come down to government, yet we, we have a government mm -hmm. and we created it. Mm -hmm. And we sustain it through our votes and through our taxes and so on. And then the nonprofit sector, which also fills in gaps. Where do you see the lines being drawn between these three sectors? Wow. Uh, I mean, it's so important that, that we see that uh, the challenges that we face as a society are shared challenges. Uh, and oftentimes, I think we, we tend to say, well, here, here's a problem and uh, it's in that person's bucket or it's their responsibility. Kind of wash my hands, exactly. right? Exactly. Government will, spend, will do it or business will take care of it or nonprofit, so I can wash my hands. Right, and in some cases we're, we're undercutting by uh, oftentimes people will, will complain about one sector or the other and in doing so they're kind of washing their hands by, by being critical of the failures of, of a different group rather than saying I have responsibility to, to address this. And I think there's a real troubling trend uh, in our society about kind of undercutting the strength of our institutions. And institutions can be, you know, government institutions. Uh, it can be, you know, institutions of uh, civic society. It's the churches. It's the or civic institution of, of, of commerce. Exactly. Uh, and, and businesses have those uh, those responsibilities. And so as as we weaken our institutions, they tend to narrow themselves and say, well, all I can really control and have influence over is this very narrow spectrum, and so I'm just gonna focus on that and close myself off to the, the broader responsibilities of those institutions. So, but if we can invest in, support, encourage, and, and uh, as a society kind of um, demonstrate that, that we value people that give their lives and their careers to strengthening institutions, rather than um, you know, kind of looking for every opportunity to, uh, to undercut those. And so I think that's one of the areas that government, the nonprofit sector, and the business sector uh, have similarities. Um, but I would really hope that we can encourage more collaboration and more common and shared ownership of the, the problems uh, that we face. Don Ness, thank you so much for sharing your ideas surrounding civil society. You are leadership of the Ordeen Foundation and thank you so much for your insights. Well, thank you.